Okay, hello again. Part 2C. Again, I'm still talking about genealogy. All right. Um, the next section of this book that I'm referring to is co-authored by Brian Klopotek, K-L-O-P-O-T-E-K. The name of this section is called Of Shadows and Doubts, Race, Ingenuity, and White Supremacy. Okay. Again, I'm just going to point out some things I highlighted. One central concern in this essay is a pattern of anti-black racism evident in many Indian communities in the southeastern United States. Okay. Now, I am going to express my understanding of why it initially was created. Okay. Now I understand the racist whites, white folks want to separate uh, blacks and natives, especially blacks and natives, because they don't want that black blood to slip into their bloodline, pretty much. Um, as far as the natives, I understand initially why they chose to separate themselves from blacks, because they could lose uh, land, you know, all kinds of stuff. So I understand why they um, wanted separate school. You know, so they want to stay separate, segregated. Just stay away from the black folks. Stay away. You know, don't mix with those people. So I get that. But now it's just full-blown racism in, in some circles. Not all circles, but in some circles, it's just full-blown racism. And when you look at them, a lot of times they have a lot of white ancestry themselves. Um, so, yeah. I get it. But at this point, it's just straight up racism. Um, the next page I highlighted on the regular, uh, regulating racial categories. Um, educational segregation became a key way for Indians in the South to distance themselves as much as possible from blacks. Yes. So they were for segregated schools. They did not want to associate with blacks, the ones that wanted to keep the culture, the language, and all of that. But eventually, it just became racism. Next page. An Indian community with even a small degree of black ancestry is much less likely to have been acknowledged as Indian than a community with even greater degrees of white ancestry, making it far more difficult for them to establish claims. I will say it again. An Indian community with even a small degree of black ancestry is much less likely to have been acknowledged as Indian than in a community with even greater degrees of white ancestry, making it far more difficult for them to, to establish claims. And people wonder why there are groups for instance, Facebook, social network platforms, where they have groups for black and natives, African native connections, things of that nature. People that have that mixture. People wonder why, oh, oh what are, why is this created? You know, you're, you're trying to separate yourselves from the indigenous population. We shouldn't distinguish between phenotypes. We should, you know what, at the end of the day, you, if you don't have the black blood, but you're also native, you have privilege. We don't. You can choose to be indigenous. We have to fight for our identity. There is a difference, period. Next page, 81. Considering that previous acknowledgement from the federal government is the gold standard and is supposed to establish tribal existence at every point prior, African ancestry becomes a considerable barrier to recognition. Again, African ancestry becomes a considerable barrier to recognition. Again, we have a few state recognized tribes in the state of Virginia. And I'm telling you, the, the, I'm sorry, but the ones that 
push away any black can or anybody that look black and they look very white and they're whatever, they're gonna be recognized first by the federal government. I hate to tell it to you, y'all. I hate to, I hate to keep it real, but in this day and time, they're the ones gonna get recognized first. Hate to say it, I really do. And I will support, I'm sorry, I will support tribes in Virginia that people look like me, okay? I will support them because I know it's an uphill battle to get federally recognized because of that. Thus, tribes with black ancestry petitioning for federal recognition are clearly at a disadvantage. Drop down. Tribes with minimum black ancestry will have a more difficult time gaining acceptance from other tribes, okay, other tribes than will tribes with similar degrees of white ancestry because of the ways in which Indians have been encouraged through the twin processes of colonization and racial oppression to adopt anti-black anti racism. I know I ain't crazy. And this is what I've been sensing anyway. And a lot of people want to hide behind this whole tribal sovereignty. And, you know, they have the right to choose who they want in their tribe. But, yeah, you got people that look like me, okay, that have the ancestry, that have the blood, DNA, everything. First cousins, if you want to say, with somebody that don't look like me, but look more white. They will push people out. We don't want you. Now, I know there's an issue going on with people who are enrolled, who don't have black blood, but they're being disenrolled. That's another topic of discussion. But I'm just talking about the whole black native thing right about now, okay? But, yeah. So, I know I ain't crazy. When I go somewhere and I see people... Um, who are claiming their indigenous ancestry, which ain't nothing wrong with it, because I'm not I'm not a tribal police person. You know, I'm not going around telling people who is native and who ain't. That's not my place, okay? So I want to get that straight. That is not my place to go around and point my finger and say who's native, who's not native, whatever. Not my place. So if a person who's non-black that's mixed with indigenous American, if they claim their indigenous American ancestry. That is their prerogative. But I'm just saying, for those who don't understand the black and indigenous mixture experience and they have negative things to say, those are the people that pisses me off because they don't understand and don't care. Okay, next. Most present day Caribs or Colonago live in the Carib territory on the island of Dominica. I don't know why, why I highlighted that. That's talking about, okay. Oh, and just so you know, those uh, indigenous populations and indigenous communities who helped uh, slaves, or black slaves, because I know there's other types of slaves, but they helped the slaves and they had a place of refuge for these uh, slaves. And they ended up, you know, intermingling with them and, you know, and start having children by them. And, you know, that's how I became, you know what I am because of that mixture but those tribes who have a history a track record of doing that they for some reason have the hardest time either getting recognized or if they're already recognized they're having a hard time receiving funding so I think again it's a deep down racial type classification thing that Europeans, hateful racist ones, had created years ago, and people are still feeding into it. But again, those tribes that actually helped black slaves, and those slaves 
married into the community and had kids and all of that, those tribes have suffered. And a lot of tribes have been, on paper, terminated. Okay? Um... Just reading a little bit more down. The Tuscarora were engaged in contentions with colonists and other local North Carolina tribes. Competing trade interests contributed to conflicts with other native nations. But colonial records show that so many slaves sought sanctuary among the Tuscarora that this also, this also became a point of political tension. Okay? The black influence. And that's why they've been having a hard time as well, politically, because they help black slaves. And I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's documented, you know, that part of history at least is. And again, you have these tribes who. They lose respect by association with black people, people with the drop of black blood. Not that the tribe is black now, I'm not saying that. I, that's so far away from what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is if they associate it with blacks. If they helped blacks, it was like a catch-22. And again, I believe that's how a lot of racial tension was created amongst the two races. Okay? So now it's just straight up racism. But back then it was a way to kind of keep themselves, you know, keep their identity, keep the culture, keep the language and all of that. But those tribes that help those black slaves to this day having issues politically. Okay, dropping them, going to the next page. One oral history mentions Ratihanahan Tisi. Okay, this is Mohawk. I don't know the language, sorry. Um, hiding on the Tuscora Reservation near Lewiston before continuing on to St. Catharines in Hamilton, Ontario. I don't know why I highlighted that. Um, okay, let me go back. At the beginning of this chapter, um, again, this is about the Mohawk people. Um, it says, Rotinahan to see and Rotinahan San Ni, historic relationships between African Americans in the Confederacy of the Six Nations, or the Iroquois, okay? Um, it says, while we have numerous references to Indians held as slaves, considerably less reliable information about Roti Nahan Sti and Roti Han Sunni relationships is available. Now, let me break it down. Roti Nahan to see, the Mohawk name for African Americans means people who have dark skin. Okay? And then Rotanon San Ni refers to people of the Longhouse or the Mohawks. So they consider they, they refer to themselves as Rotanon San Ni and they refer to black slaves as Rot Rot. Hana Han to see. Okay. So I'm just going to say, just for the sake of me chopping up a word, I'm just going to say, see Mohawk. Knee black folks. Okay. <laughs> Knee. Okay. So, um, anyway, it says they would be given new identities assigned to specific clans and female relatives. In these ways, C, Mohawk, blood was sub subsumed by Ni, black folks, identity and oral history. The individual stories have been lost. Wow. To be continued.